near-death experience after that when I was with the Tibetan Foundation, you know, I was going through the, the kind of the mundane stuff, relationship breakup, uh, person not being honest yeah. with me, and, and uh, you know, all these things happening, financial problems and everything. And, and I just sat down and tapped in one day. I go, I don't know what I'm going to do with all this. And next thing you know, I was pulled right out of my body. And I was out in space looking back at the earth getting smaller and smaller and smaller until it was a pinhole, pinhole, you know, just a little pinhead. And I was looking down, <laughs> wow, wow, you know. And I was so expanded, feeling so incredible. And then <clears throat> Kazika, one of the beings I work with, he said, this is who you are and those are your problems, <laughs> you know. And, <laughs> That's a perspective. Wow. Yeah, and when I came back, wow. everything just was gone. I mean, I, I was so blissed out and so, and everything just fell away. And, and I think the whole earth is going to end up going through that same process. Mm-hmm. You know, going through its yeah. own near-death experience, you might say, or... Or uh, shakabuku, as a friend of mine says, as Katie says, which is a, a hard spiritual kick to the head, you know, <laughs> to get yeah, you. Yeah, the dark, on. the dark night. It's a dark night yeah. of the soul. It's going into the dark to meet God. You know, uh-huh. absolutely. Yeah, I mean, uh, admittedly, that's probably you know having a community and um, having to observe as a practitioner many different beings going through their awakening process. I admit it's very hard to hold neutrality in that because yeah. it's never fun watching people go through the suffering part of that. And yet, in some cases, it's entirely necessary because it's how the alchemy of the spirit is able to create and carve the space within the body to embody the spirit. Because one thing I don't think it's very hard for us to understand is we are coming into the embodiment of divinity. Okay, so that means we've got to create the space for it, right? Mm -hmm. The body has to be prepared to actually be completely congruent with an embodied soul consciousness. So when we think about our divinity, you know, we were kind of like trying to intellectualize it as something outside of us. You know, it's coming in. Our divinity is descending and actually the process of ascension is actually descension. It's a descension of our spirit into physical matter. We are becoming, you know, God made manifest, you know, divinity, soul actualized beings in these bodies. So that process is definitely you know, molecular, shifting the atomic levels of our being. I mean, it's it's quite amazing what's going on, the transmutation process of actually understanding what our bodies are going through during this time is, is quite mind-boggling. <laughs> yeah, there's a, there's a few times. We signed up for this, when, folks. <laughs> yeah, there's a few times when I was I felt like I was dying, physically dying, going through this process. Yes. And as soon as yes. I started to go, you know what, uh, what's, it's not so bad over there on the other side. I've already been there. I said, so right. what? If I wake up dead, who cares? You know, and I woke up and I was fine <laughs> in the morning. As soon as I surrendered to the process and stopped resisting it and fighting it, it's true. And just let yeah. go and, and let spirit take over. You know, it everything turned out fine. That's so true, and that's a very important message because. Um, there doesn't seem to be that information, that much information available talking about ascension symptoms at that severe level. I think mm-hmm. a lot of people, when their bodies start acting differently, they get kind of scared or freaked out. They don't know what to do about it. And, um, you know, that's definitely one thing I try to provide a lot of information on. And, it, you know, in many cases, it is just that. It's yeah. learning to breathe through the process and have a context. I think a lot of the times, just when people understand that this is part of it, they can mm-hmm. relax, you know. Yeah. Because, again, some of the symptoms are very weird, I admit. I mean, they're strange. Yeah. <laughs> well, I know one thing that, now this goes just back to base science, is that, you know, we are going through incredible fluctuations in the fields on Earth, and uh, we are moving into a new, highly energized place, you know, in space, according to the Russian scientists. And so, any way you look at it, you know, and then moving through galactic plane, you know, which is going to really wreak yeah. havoc on the, ma- on the magnetic fields. So, right. you know, Stanford Research did studies with monkeys, and they subjected them to magnetic field fluctuations, and they exhibited behavior, everything from... Uh, self mutilation to comatose and uh, you know all over the spectrum, but I always say we don't have to behave like monkeys. And if we get out of this this lower mind, you might say the ego or that mental yeah. body, and get up yeah. into the soul and the higher mind, it's not going to affect us, and and we can move. That's exactly it. That. 
That's exactly it. I mean, the, the, from the, the guardians are basically saying for those of us that have, have done our, because I have to say, I mean, in all honesty, this is spiritual homework. Both you and I, I found it amazing, James, because both you and I were teaching classes on energetic self-mastery, and I didn't even know that you were doing that. You know what I'm saying? We both called it the yeah. same thing. Uh-huh. And, but that's really what it is, is it takes a declaration of your intention to serve your soul or God purpose every day. It takes discipline in the beginning. After you get through the, the discipline piece, when you get the ego in control, because again, in the, in the beginning, you're flip-flopping around. You know, it's mm-hmm. the internal Armageddon and the conflict between the heart and the mind. That goes away and it becomes so much easier. But I know in the beginning, it's challenging for a lot of people to stay with it because it does take discipline to really reprogram the consciousness and as well the nervous, the nerve synapses and the motor neurons and the axons and dendrites, everything that's been programmed in the old energy, you know, because we're learning a completely new language, you know, and this new language really is the higher sensory feeling function of the emotional body, of the heart intelligence. It's understanding the heart isn't just about, you know, because when we think of the heart, sometimes I think we can misinterpret it as, you know, oh, those feelings, you know. The, the heart is where it's at. It is the access to the creative intelligence field of the universe. So do you want to be limited to the mental constructs of a finite space where you can access archetypes and, you know, preconceived ideas, or do you actually want to have access into the universal creational fields. I mean, they're really, you know, what what language do you want to be speaking? (laughs) I mean, you know, so it's interesting. It really is. It's through the uh, higher sensory feeling is through the heart is through the emotional Mm -hmm. intelligence. Yeah, Yeah. I have, I have, you know, we run into all kinds of people here at the ranch and at the self mastery uh, classes and the conferences. And, you know, I love science, cutting edge science. Don't get me wrong, but I, I keep seeing over and over again, you know, the intellect is just a drop in the sea of consciousness, but a lot of these PhDs have so much invested in in their intellect and the recycled ignorance that they've been taught and they've written books and they just can't let go of that and get into the higher mind or the or the more unlimited consciousness and and they think that drop is the all and the all and, and they have their piece of paper on their wall to back them up you know, that, that, that this is law and they, you know, it's, it's just amazing. And, you know, even in the UFO field, I see these people, they, they, they say, well, I have a PhD, you know, and I said, oh, and ufology. And they said, well, no, it's in this and this and that. And I said, well, I didn't know they taught ufology in, in college, you know. <laughs> As a matter of fact, they wow. teach you they don't exist. So how is it you are an expert? You know, have you seen a ship? Have you been on a ship? Do you know the occupants? Right. I said, have you, have you seen anything outside of whatever you can stick into your test tube, you know, and, and, uh, and then I asked, you know, <laughs> then, I, then I asked him, I said, I said, hey, guess, here's a news flash. You know, there's 11 dimensions out there that you can experience and more dimensions out there. And, and, you know, it's just so ridiculous because, you know, even all the main physicists now are saying that we can experience less than 1% of the universe in which we live. But, and then they want physical proof of a non-physical event, knowing right. that that it goes against their own program and it's just it's unbelievable what you have to go up against these mindsets and they're so rigid and stuck in these programs but you know there are some people like you know Bruce Lipton and some of these other people that are are now vindicating what we've been teaching for years and years and years you know that with you know there's only 30,000 genes in the body and it takes at least at least 100 you know to run the physical body so who's running the body some Outside right. field of intelligence is actually running the body, which totally vindicates what we're talking about. And I think that outside intelligence is affected by all these other fields of energy and the planets and the the major cycles and everything else. It's all tied together and it all has an effect. I Yes, absolutely. I so agree. I mean, one thing, too, with all of this, at least... You know, well, you've been in this field for a long time, James. I mean, would you 